I'm opening. We have an eye, sort of a nostril, two teeth. One of the teeth has a small cavity. Close call, folks, but I think we got here just in time. Presented by Maria Menounos and Kevin Undergaro. This is Anatomy of a Movie. In-depth discussions and breakdowns of various movie titles. And now that you've seen the movie, let the dissection begin. All right. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us for another Anatomy of a Movie. This week's dissection is Whiplash. I'm John Comerford. I'm joined in the studio by Josh Richman. Hello there. I can't believe they let me on a microphone. <laughs> and Sarah Stratton. <laughs> Hello again. And Dimitri Panos. Hello, movie fans. All right. As always, we're going to jump right in. Let's talk about our overall impressions. Did Whiplash uh, hit the right notes? Did it fall flat? Let's go to our resident lady of the <laughs> I like oh, the ladies first. I get to start. Yes. All right. Um, what I have to say about this film is that, one, I had no idea what I was going in for. Um, mm-hmm. I did not know what this movie was about. I just heard about it by word of mouth and by everyone telling me I needed to see it. So I will say that I think it was a very well-made movie. I liked the story they told and the relationship they built. Um, I need to preface this with saying, like, not all good movies, like, need to make you happy this was a good movie that did not make me happy it made me very anxious throughout the entire time but that was that's the point right it's supposed to make you anxious that makes it an effective movie i was reliving my past (laughs) not that i've had anything to this much of an extreme but literally almost in the fetal position multiple times i thought the music was fantastic um but still dealing with the anxiety that it's created (laughs) I mean, personally, for me, it's uh, it definitely lands right now. As of right now, it's in my top three for the year. I really love this movie. Um, some certain things that we'll get into mm-hmm. later on, and and you know, and talking various plot points and such. Um, I was uh, I liken this movie to a really well done tense sports movie or an action movie. Mm. The way that the music was filmed in this, and it's jazz, which is highly like it's not it's unlike rock and roll and and the beats counterman everything and and what's going on so it, it was great i i mean I, I love music you all know me as a soundtrack guy mm-hmm. i love a lot of music including jazz um it was fantastic i did feel uh anxious um i've had not through learning experience uh you know i've had bosses that have mm-hmm. been uh as 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 torture megalomaniacs uh, oh, I have I just, I'm going to say okay. torturous. torturous? Okay. Um, so, so there were certain parts that I knew coming up that, uh, you know, like when he was being nice to him. And I was like, yeah. oh, no, <laughs> I, no, that's not going to yeah. like don't buy into that. Mm-hmm. But um, in any case, like I said, I, I love the performances. Mm-hmm. J.K. Simmons was fantastic. A lot has been said about J.K. Simmons, mm-hmm. deservedly so. Not enough, in my opinion, not enough has been being said about Miles Teller. Mm-hmm. Miles Teller, I think, is one of our future great actors uh he was he really poured literally his blood sweat and tears into this movie Mm -hmm. i loved what he did i thought he was amazing uh the direction was fantastic uh you know and all in all like it was cathartic i clapped uh, I was anxious. I was on the edge of my seat, uh, like a good action movie. Mm-hmm. And I credit that. Like my friend Peter Block had said, it was filmed like it. Even the way that it was edited, which I've never seen music and jazz lends itself so easily to this kind of editing. Well, uh, Damien Chazelle, the director, said that he uh, intended to kind of yeah. film a music film like a sports film. So mm-hmm. that was definitely his intention to build to that, you know, rousing showdown yeah, and climax. Absolutely. But I think what's interesting too is how well this works almost like a, a love story. You know, not a traditional love story, but you see these two figures really just circling around each other. And the reason Teller's Yeah, I didn't look at it as a love story, but but definitely a boxer you know, for you sure. You know, you start with that initial meeting, and then you see uh, you see Fletcher show up outside of Naaman's classroom, and you see Naaman show up outside of Fletcher's classroom, and they're like, they're circling each other like sharks. Yeah. And the reason yeah, Teller's Sharks perform- is not a love story. Well, just wait a minute. We all have our different yeah. versions. Yeah. Let Josh have his. And... But I think the reason Jaws, a love story. I think the reason Teller's performance is so magnificent, and you're right, it hasn't gotten nearly enough praise, is because he's matching Simmons just in terms of sheer intensity. Oh, absolutely. But I I look at this more as a battered wife (laughs) love love story. But um, it was, yeah, I mean, very intense. And you're right. I mean, and again, J.K. Simmons, 
he's the State Farm guy, fantastic character <laughs> actor. No, but he's always been, and, and, yeah. but, but he's but always been a, a character yeah. actor. I think this totally elevates him. Uh, in all the interviews, he's just fantastic. Seems like I would love, I would love for him to be sitting on the couch. Miles Teller as well. And you're right. Miles Teller was able to stand toe-to-toe with an intense performance, as J.K. Simmons put in. That's mm-hmm. why I think Miles Teller not getting enough credit because that the acting could have been too weak on that side and he would have fallen through. So, mm-hmm. um, But, right. John, we haven't heard... Uh, well, I thought the music was amazing. And I, I, I have, as anybody who's listened to these will tell you, as soon as we talk about music, I usually tend to stop talking because I don't know music very well and I don't uh, have the right uh, articulation to, to speak on it wisely. So, but uh, that being said, I'm not only am not a music aficionado, I'm not even a uh, jazz enthusiast, but this made me, because I just love the music in it and I so wish the movie was as good as the music because for me it was not. Interesting. And it seemed very one note in its relationship between ha. the two. So, uh, for th- for that for those reasons, I was much was wishing that there, it was more than it was. I don't know. You say one note, I say focused, just incredibly focused on this central relationship and how it affects both of these characters. I I appreciated that for what I'm it was. glad you two are sitting on the same side of the table today. <laughs> cause I just feel like it's going to be like bickering over there, uh-huh. but good bickering. Well, no, so- and and when we when we get into it, I'm like I'm really curious because, you know, for me, uh, there was a little. We'll talk the ending. Mm-hmm. The ending, there has been much debate about the ending, and J.K. Simmons has even mentioned that. Um, so, oh. We, well, we, we just be- learned that our very special guests are on the line, so why don't we cut into them right now? We have Ben Wilkins and Craig Mann. Who, uh, hello. Were, hello, how are you? Thanks for joining us. Thank you. So where can we start? Ben, uh, so, uh, Craig, uh, all right, just by voice, let me yes. introduce and, and then say hello so that uh, audience can get to know your voice. Um, Craig Mann, this is Dimitri. Hello, and thanks for being on Anatomy of a Movie. Thank you. And Mr. Wilkins, you and I go way, way back to like three months ago. Um, yes, we do. How are you, my friend? I'm well, thank you. Sound editor extraordinaire. So, uh, again, thank you, gentlemen, uh, for being on the show and again for our, our audience. Um, we have Craig Mann, who is, correct me if I'm wrong, you were the music uh, mixer on this particular particular production. Music and dialogue, yes, sir. Music and dialogue, wow. fantastic. Wow. You did such a fantastic job, I have to say. Yeah, and, and Ben, you were, you know, you were working that, that soundboard, like I've seen you work, you were sound editor and sound recording or, or sound uh, mixing as well. Yeah, uh, I... But yeah, I mean, sound editor and sound mixer, I just did everything that Craig didn't do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, we know that we have a limited time with you, and we're very excited, so I'm just going to jump into uh, questions, and, and please uh, answer with your own, like, your own experience on this. First question, this is a, this movie is predicated by jazz, okay? So for sound and editing and the way that it was cut, um, First, as the music and, and the dialogue goes, how what was the challenges for you, uh, Craig? And how how did this all come to you? And then, like when you had to piece this together, uh, how what were your challenges in doing this movie? This came to us by way of um, Blumhouse, who's a client of mine that I do a lot of stuff for, and so they, I mean, I knew this was in development for a while, and they wanted me to do it, and course a big music film any sound guy's dream so right. we're <laughs> eager to eager to get on it and and um, go ahead sorry go ahead go ahead no so so we should also let blumhouse is normally known for their horror movies mm-hmm. so to see blumhouse on an independent film like this i was mm-hmm. like good for them uh, this is great so a, d- a different kind of horror movie. Uh, yeah a different <laughs> a different kind of horror movie so but in in Doing this, like, was there any anything different with Whiplash and in and, and difficulties in matching matching whatever the sound is, and especially for the drum solos? You know, it, it, it's been said that final caravan drum solo, and even though that Miles Teller was able to play the drums mm-hmm. uh, on his own, they still had a they still pro, pre-viz this out apparently. And they pre-recorded this drum solo, right? Because you're not—I right. mean, you're not so, hearing his drumming, how, right? It's a similar drum right. solo that very closely matches right. it. So, how difficult was that? Was there a challenge in getting that to look and sound right in the movie? Did we lose you. Hello, ben, ben, are you there, Craig? 
we shocked them in the silence. All right, let's see what we can do about getting <laughs> technical back on difficulties, the line. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Let me apologize that uh, we'll work on that and see if we can get it back. Lost, yeah, I just got a text. Lost you, yes. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So uh, we're we're calling you back right now. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. In any case, but because yeah. what I'm most interested in, because these guys are obviously music guys through and through. What I want to know is if their approach is different, because this is a a movie that obviously relies heavily on the music mm-hmm. where, as opposed to some other movies where it's not as an integral character of the piece yeah and one of the questions too like Ben Ben you know with, you know with me everything in one way shape or form will lead back to Star Trek mm-hmm. Ben worked on the 2009 <laughs> Star Trek hello Ben and Craig you're back online oh, oh okay hey there. so um uh, sorry that we lost you there. Uh, okay. I don't know. I don't know how far into the question. Let's just start a new question. So, um, I guess my question is uh, the drum solo, uh, "Caravan" at the end of the movie. Now we know yeah. that Miles Teller was able to play the drums to an extent. He has experience, but f- the way I understand is that that was that drum solo was pre-recorded. How difficult was that for you, matching with editing and sound and getting it in there so that you helped make Miles Teller's Andrew look like a drum rock star or jazz star? Uh, it was definitely challenging. Um, it was a mixture of, as you say, pre-record, production drums, and drum ADR that all had to be meshed together to sort of into what you hear in the theater. And it, it just took time and it took a lot of uh, just sort of subtle nuance to sort of get it to where it needed to be. And how many tracks did it take? <laughs> uh, the pre-records yeah. were around 64 tracks of band, I think, wow. and the production recording were a couple of tracks, and okay. the drumming wow. style was around, I think, 20 odd tracks I think okay now for a layman such as myself is that a huge amount or is that your normal thing you have to deal with that's quite a bit of material for <laughs> yeah. a production of this size I would say yeah were you were you supervising recording sessions uh, just saying do more takes do more takes not my tempo not my tempo that's all I'm imagining <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we we tried not to ride people too hard. <laughs> we were no, we were on the stage. We we did start uh, depending on how, what kind of a mood we in. We we were both channeling J.K.'s character. At Perfect. Point. <laughs> we were screaming. We were uh, when Craig would have uh, prob. You know, there's a there's a. There's a scene in the movie where J.K.'s character says, uh, "Little trouble there, not quite my tempo." Right. <laughs> and if either of us did something we didn't like. We'd uh, we'd say that to each other. Now, that ben, was pretty funny. Now, Ben, from you, I can see that. I mean, you are an ogre at the <laughs> set. <laughs> I, of course, I'm, I'm kidding, and, uh, and and I kid with love. So, so Ben, were were you were you on set? Like, I mean, as an editor, yeah. that scene, a lot of those scenes, but that scene in particular was directed like an action scene or a sports movie scene. Like, how? what were your challenges? I mean, were you on set? Did you get to see the previs? So you had an idea going into, like, what you were going to have to do? No, I don't. I prefer not to do that. I prefer just to uh, kind of jump in at the deep end to the film and tr- <laughs> try and retain that sort of first look feeling that mm. you get, you know, uh, and tr- try and stay connected to being an audience member. Um but the, 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 big, the biggest challenge I had was putting back things that musicians would normally ask you to take out. Oh, interesting. So we, we had things where, you know, qualified session musicians wouldn't necessarily let those sounds uh, get out into the recordings, and we had to go back and put all those back in. So it really, so it didn't sound like a recording session. May you please give us an example uh, yeah. of what that uh, might have been? There's a... Big, um, you know, normally uh, th- th- there's a there's an extreme close up of someone playing a double bass, a stand up bass, mm-hmm. and uh, normally, you know, the, the way you'd record that thing, you would record where the sound comes out, and you wouldn't record the the guy's fingers as, right. as he's fretting, as he's changing uh, the the notes. Right. And so we went back in and re-recorded those uh, those sounds of the fingers mm-hmm. touching the fretboard. Right. Um, and there was also a, a ton of drum adjustment and stick stick handling yeah. as well. It's yeah. the most drumstick uh, heavy movie I've ever worked. Oh, on. I'm sure because I you know I've, I've seen quotes that you know to film somebody playing piano is often fairly simple because you can disguise their hands with the piano and just make it seem like they're they're hammering the keys properly. Drumming you yeah. can't do that. You really have to match every single stroke and every single hit. 
and who yeah you? And, and as craig mentioned the the, the really the the final stage of all of that drum material coming together was was hiring a, an incredibly skilled uh, session drummer hmm. who was able to drum in time with what the actors did because there are three drummers there, there are three right. different actors drumming yeah. Uh, and uh, only one, I won't tell you which one, but only one of them could actually play uh, <laughs> well, with well, any kind of deg degree well, we, well, of uh, what, accuracy. It, would I be correct in saying, because in, in research, it, it, Miles Teller has said that he's been playing drums since he was 15. And the director himself is somewhat of, a, of an accomplished uh, bit of a drummer as well. Mm. Yeah, okay. yeah. Which again didn't didn't uh, didn't let, we want we couldn't get away with anything. Yeah. Oh, he uh, he would see every single quarter beat of anything that got moved. He would see. Was he was he in? Okay, just to give you guys uh, try to give you a visual. We were all we've all been familiar with what a soundboard is. Mm -hmm. The soundboards mm -hmm. these gentlemen are working on are bigger than the room that we're in right now. <laughs> I mean, it is huge, and to watch. I had the pleasure and honor of working with Ben earlier this year, and he's like a like a maestro in in putting pods up, cooling them down, heat, and then dropping in a sound or finding a sound effect to put in, and it was just an amazing experience. So, was the director over your shoulder, so to speak? Was uh, uh, Chazelle like right over you and saying, "Hmm, I you know punch this up, or I want a little more snare." or I want that to be sharper, I want the splash, I want it to be a bigger splash. Was he giving you notes or, or telling or saying, this is what I want? Jamie was definitely there every day and he was yeah, very focused on what he wanted and didn't want and he had a very clear picture in his head of what he wanted the track to be. And so yeah, if we sort of advertised anything that he wasn't interested in or hadn't heard before he, he wasn't particularly interested in. He was definitely very focused on what he wanted to have in the film. Ben and Craig, this movie I think did a wonderful job not only of all of the technical difficulties that you had to deal with, but also of I think bringing jazz into such a beautiful light. Do either of you guys have a past history with jazz music in particular or connection to that in your past? <laughs> uh, <laughs> wow! Okay. Than, uh, <laughs> Answers that. You know, a massive amount of uh, of uh, drinking while listening to jazz music at some point in my life. No, that's that's about it. But uh, no, not, no formal training or any other sort of uh, formal relationship with that. Uh, I mean, look, I'm know. not a, I'm not a jazz aficionado either, but I think this movie did do a great job of making that world accessible to uh, to a lay person and and understanding just how how di how often physically strenuous this kind of music can be. Exactly. Did you like okay? So with Caravan, uh, like in the sound. Okay, did you get to work on the soundtrack at all? Uh, I've been listening. You know, I, I've I purchased the soundtrack. I've been listening to it nonstop. So, is any of what because there's even some dialogue in the soundtrack? Is any of that your guys' magic and how you made the, and how the soundtrack sounds? The uh, dialogue is right from the mix that we, we shipped to the uh, music department to put together on the soundtrack. Mm -hmm. And uh, in terms of the, the actual score, not the pre-records, we yeah got the stuff from the composer, and you know that's that's in the film, and we mixed that along with the rest of the pre-record material. Well, that's amazing. Um, the other thing too, and Ben, you know you. you the, the time we've spent together and everybody here knows I'm a big Star Trek fan so everything comes back to Star Trek and Ben you worked like on Star Trek so how different of uh, like how different is it working on a movie like Star Trek uh, with you know you have to make cr almost create sounds or get sounds that are created as opposed to working on Whiplash like what are the main differences uh, the two main differences uh, uh, is the amount of time you have mm. um I think we probably spent more on food on Star Trek than we did on the sound for Whiplash. <laughs> uh, and the, the second is the second is that the Whiplash dealt with uh, dealt with actually entirely dealt with real sounds and things that, that the audience were familiar with. Mm -hmm. And Star Trek was more a matter of uh, coming up with things that no one had ever seen or heard before. So it was a, it's a very different challenge. And some of the quiet scenes in Whiplash were some of the toughest that we've worked on in a while. My one um, critique is I do think Whiplash could have used more laser sounds. 
<laughs> like laser drums. Definitely and more monsters as well. Yes, more yes, monsters, yes. yes. <laughs> um, you know, we could, well, I find that amazing. Like, how well, did why you... were they? Why were they more difficult? Yeah. Because uh, when you're when you're dealing with environments that people are familiar with, and yeah. you're dealing with sounds that people are familiar with, um, there's nowhere to hide. You have no justification for not doing it completely correctly. Hmm. So everyone knows what people's feet sound like, or or what a movie theater sounds like, yeah. or you know what a um, you know what a cup of tea in a saucer sounds like. So the, those things are uh, those things have to be perfect. And and I understand too that in the movie that it was a very tight schedule. There wasn't a not, there wasn't a lot of time where they can do a double take, triple take on certain things. Particularly again, going back to the caravan drum solo, which comes in towards the end of the movie. When you're editing that, and they're they have coverage shots. They've got shots of snares and the symbol, and then they'll go where you can see the audience, and then J.K. Simmons. And how difficult was it to try to match that from a sound perspective? Because it happened all so quick. With the, the type of schedule on that, you're, you're really just kind of, you're going with your gut a lot. You don't get to <laughs> do a lot of experimentation or, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes the real tragedy is sometimes you need three or four or five passes to really sort of mm -hmm. get the, you know, creative vibe up to where it needs to be. And in this case, you know, we, you've got a couple of, passes to get it where it needs to be and you got to get on to the next thing so can you answer what uh time frame you did have and what is the normal what is a quote normal one you have this was around two weeks I think <laughs> you're kidding days. me you're kidding days. me Actually, seriously two weeks wow yeah. yeah and was this to get it ready for festivals and such yeah, yeah, correct. That was for Sundance, and then uh, after after Sundance, I believe we had another. I, I asked if we could have another two, three days to sort of touch some stuff up that we had. And, uh, <laughs> and how much would crazy. what what would a normal time span be for you? Well, uh, I know it varies very <laughs> much, but what, yeah, what it depends a little bit on budget. But sure. you know, each band might have a two two week pre dub, and then you might. Okay. You might two week final, right. you know, on a moderate budget. So you know okay. you're right. you're at six weeks right there. But I wonder so. if having that kind of accelerated schedule like infused this movie with like extra energy. I I mean I think just rushing through it and feeling like you're just making all these intuitive decisions helped kind of capture lightning in a bottle. Well, you know there is something to be said for mixing on gut if you have good instincts, and uh, yeah. I think a lot of the times you can overbake stuff if you have too much time on it. Yeah. I think that's you know that's that's a valid argument. Well, let me be uh, at least one of the first to say that, uh, and I and I mentioned this to to Ben. I, I feel that outside of like acting and such as being nominatable, I think sound editing and sound mixing in this movie oh, easily completely nominatable. And you know, let it be said here in Anatomy of a Movie that we hope <laughs> this is the the road. Like we hope this is the first step on that Yellowberg Road because you know a lot of people will look at the bigger movies uh, like, like well I'm not going to mention them, but bigger movies coming out, and you have a movie like Whiplash, and that's why I think it's an honor to have you folks. We want, as movie fans, it's amazing, like what you, the, the blood, sweat, and tears you pour into this mm -hmm. to make the sound and to get an audience wrapped up and to get an audience to like jazz. You guys did an amazing job. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think we like jazz more now than we did before. <laughs> I've never, never heard any, we've ne neither of us had heard any of those yeah. songs before. So I still uh, hum them to myself in mm -hmm. the shower. Wow. Did and you that was a year ago. We, that was a, we <laughs> so you worked on this a year, a year ago, ago, huh? Yeah, we got it. Yeah, we got it ready. I think the first week of January, we had to have it done for Sundance. Wow! Wow! Yeah. Well, again, just kudos. You, you, yeah. you both did an amazing job. It really is an incredible accomplishment. Then, given that you just told us it took ten days, <laughs> it just it. I just can't yeah. even understand it. And I saw it in a theater that has a relatively nice sound system. I mean, the it, it, it popped and just listening to the soundtrack and what went into the recording and how it does use perfect stereo. Yeah, you guys, you gentlemen did an amazing job and uh, we, we, we wish it continued success. Yeah. This is fantastic. Thank we, we, you. I, I, yeah. Absolutely. Thank Appreciate you again for uh, coming. And, and I do have to ask, okay, what are you, what do you, are, are you allowed to say? What are you gentlemen yeah. working on now? 
Uh, we can't really uh, can. we can't okay. really discuss that right now. Okay. Uh, right. color does not uh, advocate any sort of discussion of <laughs> projects that are going on. I understand. Yeah. Have, I truly if understand. You, but uh, if you go on IMDb, you might be able to find out. But we can't say. Gotcha. Fair enough. Well, at some point then, on whatever a movie is, we'd really love you to have come in and join us in studio because it would be fantastic to have you. Uh, I think this is a great piece for all of the Anatomy of a Movie audience mm -hmm. members. So mm -hmm. thank you very and we, much. We know you're working right now. So again, we want to thank you very much for taking the time out in your busy day to come here and, and be part of this. Yeah. So we appreciate thank you. that very I much. I look forward to your Oscar acceptance speech. <laughs> <laughs> yes, just remember thank Anatomy you. of a Movie. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, folks. Okay. Thanks. Bye -bye. We'll talk later. Bye-bye. That was great to have Ben on, and Craig, we appreciate that so much. That's so I great. Like five more uh, questions. You, you do? <laughs> Ask them now. Well, Maybe they'll, yeah. they'll they'll do it. Well, well no. the they'll next time we get there. Go ahead. Where are they? We'll I really want to know what their favorite what like their favorite scene turnout was. Mm -hmm. um, I want to know when they said they went back and corrected after Sundance, what mm -hmm. changes they made. And my random question of the day is, I really want to know the name of the studio drummer who matched three different drummers. Mm. Oh, yeah, so we can check his material out. That. For it, all we know, he's like a jazz drummer who's got albums yeah. and stuff. Well, I'm <laughs> wondering if it's, uh, I'd have to look it up, but I'm wondering if it's the guy that's that's credited on the soundtrack. Mm -hmm. Possibly. Um, but I think that he, I was just like blown away by, that's that, that's really amazing to be able to do that visually. Because like, for me, if we're going to get into the movie and you're talking about the times where he's like going, tempo, a little bit faster, a little bit slower. <laughs> I, I like to think that I am musically inclined. I <laughs> do. You play an uh, I played an instrument for ten years. I was in again? band. I, I was in choir. This. Like, I've done lots of music, <laughs> and I could not. I could not hear which one was faster and which one was slower. <laughs> I was literally like, "Am I supposed to be able to hearing this?" And he's, is he just crazy? Is he just yelling for no reason? Mm -hmm. Like, I couldn't hear it. I was able to kind of time. talk myself into thinking, "Okay, he's rushing there. Or okay, he's dragging there." But I don't really know. That's the thing. <laughs> or like later when you got the scene about the kid being in in tune. Right. Mm -hmm. That was also reliving personal fears of mine. <laughs> oh, um, that scene was matching. No, see, that uh, scene was pure evil. Yeah, yeah. that scene. Where, but it, it makes you question if someone's that in your face. You're like, I'm wrong. I'm like, I'm wrong. I don't even know if I'm right. But yeah, my nightmares are just having J.K. Simmons inches from my face, screaming at the top of his lungs. Also, getting the air support that you don't go sharp or flat while someone's yelling at you. Yeah. Sorry, I don't know. <laughs> There's a lot of anxiety. Yeah, it's. I mean. Again, yeah, the, I th and, and to your point, Josh, I, I do believe, too, that at times I think the movie was meant to make you uh, anxious mm -hmm. uh, or a little bit on edge mm -hmm. um, because you knew it was coming. And like, you know, you were saying, I was saying, I, I've, again, not through the, edu the education process, through the work process, you know, I've worked with abusive people before. And it was so weird because, um, you know... <laughs> That scene where he takes him aside and he's like, "So, mm -hmm. you know, your first, yeah. Yeah, your first year. What about your family? Yeah. Blah blah blah." Right, blah. and I totally felt and you were thinking like, "Oh, oh my God, he's just getting info out of this guy, so yeah, he could, like use well, it against yeah, him." Yeah, and I just like going, "Oh, good God," because like I had that happen to me, and then mm -hmm. whatever I had said to this guy mm -hmm. came back, you. "Oh, used against me." It mm -hmm. was like insane, and mm -hmm. he would do it in front of an office. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the way J.K. Simmons played that that character. Mm -hmm to me was amazing and Miles Teller and 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 the way he was able to well he stood up in a sense to him um he did what I'm sorry he stood up he stood up to the best of his capabilities mm -hmm. to him but we'll, we'll talk about the end a little bit more because apparently there is some controversy which I think yeah. is good for I, I wonder how many people are going to watch this movie and think you know what I agree the worst two words in the English language are good job and this is what it takes to inspire true greatness I do not subscribe to that. Neither, and neither does neither J.K. Do I, Simmons. But, he, uh, mm -hmm. you know, J.K. Simmons has said no. There's nothing masochistic that doesn't belong in yeah. this world, and, you know. But uh, but there's a lot of people who, who do believe that. Oh, absolutely. And do push mm -hmm. that. That's that for me is one of the places where it falls down. But go ahead. Um, Interesting. See, the thing is, what I do think that while the perspective displayed in this movie is not right or healthy, mm -hmm. I think it exists. Yeah. And I've witnessed it and like bringing that part to light versus a lot of times in a hero's journey, we mm -hmm. get them earning more from straight talent or being able to balance love and friendship. Mm -hmm. um, in this movie, Miles has a huge driving force behind him that mm -hmm. <laughs> 
is I think beyond dedication and there are people who are that focused mm -hmm. and they're and they work well with teachers like this right and I've met both parts of this story in real life and they are scary to be around and I don't agree with how they live but it was interesting to see that portrayed on film because we don't get that we don't get the mentor mentee relationship that is abusive on film unless one like wins every <laughs> army movie full metal jacket uh, you know, right but there it's clearly it's clearly supposed it, to be an abusive relationship here yeah. it's more ambiguous well, yeah here it, it's ambiguous and here it's based on how is it ambiguous i mean it's clear from the get-go he's a monster me, it's different because this is about is terrible. like the creatives uh -huh. like creatives who so much are portrayed as driven by a passion or a love of the art or genuine right. talent and in this we understand he's talented but it's both there's so much focus on practice uh -huh. and right. on drive and on hard work which i found very interesting to see on film you know Ter terence fletcher might have uh, you know, might have discouraged a lot of his students. Uh, it's implied he may have even driven one of them to suicide. Mm -hmm. uh, so his methods aren't going to work. It's they make it clear it doesn't work on most students, but maybe for somebody who is intense as Andrew Naiman, it's what he needs to like unlock his potential. Well, I, I think one thing to note here, and this is and, and this is going to go, but this is going to segue into one of my favorite scenes in the movie, is that um, I'm not. We're not familiar with this world mm -hmm. um, of of going to. Juilliard. Juilliard. Oh, I'm sorry. Or, or sorry. Or Did I say that? Schaefer. No, but but <laughs> and 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 the thing is, is that um, we are accustomed to the Full Metal Jackets. We're accustomed to seeing the sports movie in which mm -hmm. the coach mm -hmm. will will yell at at somebody for dropping a sure. ball or th like we're accustomed to that. But this is bringing us into a whole. New Music is never but seen the same way as like sports. And one of the things that that Damien had said too is he goes, mm -hmm. I wanted to show. It was that music is just as physical. Go ahead. I would say like the closest, in my perspective, that we ever see is ballet. Ballet sometimes Black pushes Swan. the Black, six. Black Swan for sure came to mind when I was where, watching this. Where it's a creative, it's also a sport, it's athletic. <laughs> but it's, it's kind of rides that line between being an art and being sure. an athletic capability. And ballet is, people mm. are now familiar with the discipline it takes. It's really not that apparent and I feel like most musical instruments and like no. I've had friends who've gone to musical mm -hmm. conservatories and been in these positions and like had crazy teachers <laughs> and like sometimes lose sight of what gets them involved in the music in the first place sure. which is that they love it and then they end up hating right. certain pieces. The, parallel, yeah. the parallels to Black Swan are actually really interesting because it also has this messed up mentor-protege relationship mm -hmm. and it also ends in this kind of climactic showdown where you know the artist finally becomes perfect um, with at the cost of like at the expense of her own body you know it also has all this focus on kind of the body horror of your art um, yeah. I loved Black Swan too by the way yeah I, you know it's funny I had a conversation before I get back into Black Swan but mm -hmm. again I would say the difference between a ballet like ballet an audience, much like going to a stage show, an audience actually sees the physicality that's mm -hmm. taking place, much like they see the physicality of a football game, baseball game, whatever kind of sport uh, outside of horseshoes and maybe golf. Mm -hmm. You see the physicality as to what's going on in front of you. With music, again, we're so in tune to seeing music videos and, you know, they're playing their guitar, their drums, their bass, mm -hmm. their keyboards. It's you don't it's see them. It's romantic, and you don't see really the physicality that's put into it. And that's what I believe where this movie really works is showing that the physical um, endurance that can be that can c take toll on a body. And my favorite <laughs> scene being what, and I'm taking this. My favorite scene is they, were, they had a scene at a dinner table. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was the family dinner table, and the cousins come in, <laughs> and you know, Miles Teller was talking about, yeah, I'm in the Schaefer program. I got mm -hmm. this instructor, and this is great. And then as soon as the cousins come in, mm -hmm. they started talking about football. <laughs> yeah, it was like, oh, music, nah, that's uh, you're playing drums, big deal. Yeah, but it's like, just Division that? Three. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> well, I love the fact how he stood up for him. So he goes, you're playing yeah. Division Three. It's like, that's nothing. And he's like, why? You want to come out and play sometimes? Yeah. Those are words you'll never hear from the NFL. <laughs> and and again... But his dad also says... Yeah, those are the words right. you'll never hear from Lincoln Center. Yeah. Yeah. I think everyone at that table was just all in the wrong. Like, it was, yeah. yeah. It was I, a great scene, though. Yeah. It was a great scene. It was a great scene, so, but I, the whole time... And it I was shows, like, you know, Damon has this colossal ego yeah. as well. 
Yeah, I also think that uh, that scene was, I thought that was a great scene. Mm -hmm. And I thought it really started something which I was disappointed that it didn't follow through with because it showed that Andrew had the ability to go toe-to-toe with people verbally. And it was kind of like a jazz thing going on, people, Mm -hmm. you know, and I love that. But it, I thought, well, this is going to be great. So he has a voice. He can't stand up for himself, but he doesn't with his, with Fletcher. And that pissed me off. But But I I think that there's a point to that. I think there is the thing. But, okay, there is, and I agree. But what then for me, what it, all it was was Fletcher belittling, demeaning, doing all the stuff that he does. Him going away and practicing, coming back and doing better. Oh, let's have another screaming, yelling match. Him going away, practicing, doing better. So, but he never ever grows into that part. Uh, for me, Andrew doesn't grow into the part where he could, because it would have been much more interesting to me if somebody, anybody opposed Fletcher. But, but I disagree. They didn't. I, I disagree. I think he does stand up for himself. He does he, when he goes to fight him, and before he, they have the final thing. I mean, where he's many all many times he does go back to his room and practice, but plenty of other times he says, uh, "What you what you're telling me? This is BS." And he goes and he fights the guy, and then he yeah, gets him fired. But that's not that's not what he did at that at that dinner table. That right. dinner table was right. far more interesting than saying, right. "What what what? You can't take my job." No, right. I I earned. That who cares? That's, and, and that, that's and that, not verbal sparring that we saw there. It's not. And that's the thing that was missing for me is that he has the ability to do this. He right. can stand up for himself, go toe to toe. And what I wanted to see is that character grow into that. Well, it's not verbal. Still that. It's not verbal sparring, right. but there's for sure a battle of wills going on. And well, it, yeah, and that's come, clear. But I just thought it was it fell flat by not well, having him be able to do that when he clearly has the ability to. Yeah. Well, I'm just gonna go jump right into the end then because. On one hand, I, I I sort of agree with you because I felt at the end when um, okay he was completely humiliated yeah by mm-hmm. what he mm-hmm. by what Fletcher did and mm-hmm. that was just so like when that happened that was awesome <laughs> like did you like I was just like what you did I know that's, yeah, that's I how like, good oh I mean that's God. how horrible you know, yeah, he is it was so I think that's you know terrific. and but I loved it when uh, he comes back yeah and he's like. What are you doing? What are you doing? And he starts drumming, mm-hmm. and he goes to the bassist, he's or the pianist, yeah, and he's I'll like, "Cue you in, or whatever." Yeah, I'll cue you in, in caravan. Yeah. And then, as he's drumming, he just looks at me and goes, "You." Yeah. And see, had you tried to humiliate me, in, but I'm going to use this scenario that you set up to my advantage. And, and then I was all in. I was applauding. Yeah. The part at the very end. Well, I was appla- I was applauding at that mm-hmm. because he he was. Um, you know, he was standing up and he's like, mm-hmm. fuck you. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, that's great. And then it all got deflated from me at the end when he, when J.K. Simmons, when Fletcher smiles at him <laughs> and he's like, and then oh, he yeah, smiles Now back. it's about the music. Please. And then I'm like, okay, you just fell into the battered wife. Like, yeah. and, and that's See, but I think that, that was the point in my, yes. like, I think that was the point And that's why. What was the point? That it. <sighs> He wanted so much to be a drummer that it didn't matter if he was being abused. Mm. It was on his path. So he was going to suffer right. through it and do mm. it and get approval of this guy because he wants to be the best drummer. And that's a sacrifice that he's willing to make for it. And it's not even a sacrifice because it is pushing him. Like right. that's how I took it. And I took it as when they have the scene um, after Fletcher's been fired and they mm-hmm. meet in the jazz club. Yeah. And there's almost like there's a willingness in there's a willingness in in miles almost like i shouldn't have i should i shouldn't have given to the pressure and let them me turn you in or witness mm-hmm. against you like i should be your student you are so intense but you do make me better and look mm-hmm. maybe i could do all this i felt like there was like a willingness into that and that's abuse. what he mean. That's what he mean when he call it a love story. Like Andrew clearly respects this guy, and Flet and Fletcher in a sadomasochistic way. And, so that's yeah, and, and, Fletcher, and Fletcher it's is completely that way. and Fletcher is obsessed with Andrew from the beginning. I mean, mm-hmm. you could disagree with his methods, and I do disagree with his methods. But it's clear that his goal from the very beginning is to single this kid out mm-hmm. because he thinks he could be his Charlie Parker. And um, yeah. yeah, and see, and I see that. But to me, the way I looked at it is, is that. Um, 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 Miles Teller's character right now, his name just escaped me. Andrew. Andrew mm-hmm. was not only looking the better, he was looking for the acceptance that he never got anywhere else. Mm-hmm. And when you have somebody who's abusive, you just want to try harder to make that abusive person happier. Yeah. And that's mm-hmm. like, it wasn't necessarily doing it for the art. 
it was to be accepted by the person who's like humming symbols at your head right and you want to make that person happy well that's what to me so, that that's the mixed message and that's what's know, so twisted about this movie is right. this really unhealthy relationship that does lead to this moment of artistic greatness at the end mm-hmm. but i think the <laughs> i think his artistic greatness was there like i i don't think like i think his artistic greatness like, again, like I think it was there. He was a he was a gifted person, I, I believe, oh, sure. or at least that character seemed to be gifted. And you know, he, he could have gone on like to say good job to somebody <laughs> isn't necessarily if you're not doing a good job, you don't say good job. <laughs> um, you don't necessarily throw a chair at them either. Right. You you can get you can get some positive reinforcement um, out of somebody. Again, I just felt. But I just that, I, that, I just ahead. liked this portrayal of their way of thinking that like that was included that good job right. was enough because it was interesting to me it was something that that's a way i've seen but not the way i was raised on mm-hmm. it was really interesting to get really into their minds to see their right. perspective to watch him have multiple conversations where over and over andrew whether it was breaking up with his girlfriend and telling her like <laughs> mm-hmm. she was gonna yeah. ruin his life mm-hmm. to the extreme or if you go back to the dinner scene where he has a line about um, it's better to like die at 34 than be remembered right. with the fans. And they both have his family versus him have their own perspective. But at least his point of view to me was very clear. Like what he wanted and how he was going to get it mm-hmm. was, I thought, very well lived and was just motivating him in every scene. Um yeah, Andrew's kind of a terrible person. Oh yes, <laughs> well, I completely yeah, think yeah. so. He's it's not really terrible. I mean, I don't, I don't think he's malicious in any way. Well, what about that? What about that scene, breakup? Scene? Yeah, I mean, we could talk uh, about. I, the breakup I, scene. I actually thought that was that's a smart way to go. If he, if that's what he really feels, then yeah, he should say so now. So why waste have mm-hmm. her invest any time or energy into him? Yeah, <laughs> I, and, and that doesn't and, seem to be. Yeah, a, but you can argue like why he fits into the terrible person mm-hmm. mold quote unquote is how he broke up well, with it'd her it would be worse to stay with her but, the, but the, yes but then also if you just look at his interactions with people mm-hmm. about in so many other films he would have been your villain he would have been the villain who is competing for first chair mm-hmm. and who is over the top obsessed with it and who when he doesn't get it throws a fit mm-hmm. throws things he's on the phone calling other people in his band asking them for help but yeah. cursing at them in almost any other movie, he'd be the villain, and your hero would be um, the redheaded guy who <laughs> is yeah, Connolly, I think, Connolly, yeah. who doesn't do anything wrong mm-hmm. in this film. He is very nice. He seems to have good relationships with the people in his band, with um, a girl. He is in just the same talented positions. He would typically play our he hero, yeah. and Neiman he would is... overcome. And the guy who was obsessed and a workaholic would lose out because something about talent and emotion and your relationship with people would overcome that. That is how normally this story would go. But instead, they pulled your attention off Conley and focused it in on Andrew and made his perspective clear and like humanized his way of being so extremely focused right i mean yeah demon is first of all he's the guy who takes a girl on a first date to a shitty pizza place because they have played jazz music so he has something to talk about he has nothing he has he's so single-minded he has i mean it was else. a shitty pizza place it looks I mean, it looked it like could, a crappy pizza place i don't know pizza in new york you can <laughs> yeah, go to a place like that it's yeah, the best pizza in the true. world you, you um, might be right so. but then but then yeah at that breakup scene you're right maybe he had a good motivation to break up with her but the way he did it you know she she said to him so you want to break up with me because you're mm-hmm. going play and I don't know what I want to do and you've got everything and I've got nothing to look and forward to and he just yes. says yeah pretty much well, I'm not <laughs> saying it's not honest I'm saying it was it, but overall in, an, in your average film those qualities those conversations you wouldn't be making him your villain well and again the way I looked at the breakup scene was um, from a couple of ways number one we hadn't actually seen this couple together for a whole hell of a lot of time yeah, no, um, it is assumed that there's been a little bit of passage of time and that mm-hmm. they've gone out on more than just the one date that we've yeah. seen them, but we never see that in the movie. It's hard to draw sympathy in a relationship that we're not familiar with. So um, going the, 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 the Paul Verhoeven route, and I say that <laughs> from like RoboCop, is that you had to make that breakup nasty to like, it puts a face to the dehumanization that, that, that Andrew was going through. And 
it had to be nasty for there to be any sympathy for her and their two ideologies. Like, again, I can empathize and sympathize with a person who's a first year of college who doesn't exactly have their sure footing. And on the other hand, you had you had Andrew who knew exactly what he wanted to do. And for some reason, those worlds were colliding. That breakup had to be nasty to make to get any sympathy because outside, why do we care about this relationship? We yeah. really yeah. only see them together when he sees goes Three to the movie. Yeah, 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 one, one and a half times, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. So there's that. And then there is putting the face on. It's seeing how the victim reacts to being dehumanized and like mm-hmm. because he well, basically told well, them. Yeah. Yeah, it starts to become like him yeah. yes I'm, but i think he was dehumanized from the beginning and I, th- I think that's why he clicks with terence fletcher's philosophy so well why he hears that story about joe jones how, how was he dehumanized from the beginning i didn't he i think it's i think well you don't necessarily see it but if because the very first scene you see is the is when he's already talking to fletcher mm-hmm. but i think it's just implied that he's been so obsessive from such a young age that he is that he clicks with Fletcher's philosophy. He thinks, you're right, I do have to be so single-mindedly focused on this and not taking anybody else's mm-hmm. feelings into account. He's got that intensity already in him, and that's why he responds to what Fletcher's yeah. doing. And one other thing that we didn't mention, too, as far as relationships go, the the orchestra, the band, mm-hmm. we'll just call them the band, there were no relationships in that band. Mm-hmm. Like, they were all there. They performed together as a, as a mm-hmm. band, as a team. They performed collaboratively great, but once it was done, it was like, fuck you. Don't ever, don't look well, at me. It's a product you know, and, of the environment that they work Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. So, you know, he wasn't, his only relationship was with his dad. And we should talk a little bit, too. I think about Paul Reiser, yeah. who was, puts in this very sensitive, Really nice good job. That's a, just a, such, a, such a naturalistic performance. Such just a, a sweet, caring dad. Couldn't agree more. And again, when he's humiliated at Carnegie Hall... Mm-hmm. Or wherever it was, it was Carnegie Hall, I believe, wherever. or the Lincoln Center. Yeah, he goes to his dad, and his dad was well, dad hugs comes him. running to him. Yeah, his yeah. dad comes running to him, they, but they meet and he hugs for him. Sure. And again, I, I think for me, it is about acceptance. Mm-hmm. I mean, he picked playing an instrument, which doesn't get the popularity in high school that mm-hmm. playing on the football team or the baseball mm-hmm. team or in track does. And he picked jazz drummers too. Of all drummers things, are yeah. cool. Drummers get girls. I not a yeah. drummer. Not, maybe yeah. not a chess drummer. And, and, and maybe if they've made it as a look, you can look like if I learn how to, if I knew how to play the guitar or the drums, mm-hmm. yes. Anybody who's a rock star, it doesn't matter what your looks are. But I think it, with him, I think yeah. the acceptance. Yeah. Um, I, I just think that for him too, a lot of it was acceptance. We we talked about a movie earlier this year. I really hate to bring this up, but because it's. Uh, um, <laughs> we talked about um, the Chloe Moretz movie when she was the celloist. Oh, the cellist. Okay. Now it didn't mm-hmm. go into mm-hmm. it didn't go if into I stay? the if I stay it didn't go so much into the uh, mechanics and the teaching, mm-hmm. but however it did talk about how how she's a celloist. Mm-hmm. She didn't correct? a cellist cellist. Yeah, she didn't have that many friends and all. And and one of the things that it I said was positive. She was isolated, but mm-hmm. it was a positive. In that movie, I looked at it as, hey, this is someone who knows what she wants to do. Mm-hmm. She's relatively talented at what she does. Her parents are supporting her. Like, I, I like that aspect. And in this aspect, in this movie, you get, well, Paul Reiser, and he talks about, well, yeah, I still go to the movies with my dad. Like, that was a nice, that was a nice moment as well when, when they were talking on their first mm-hmm. date. And, like, her, how she misses home and everything. Goes, no, I still go to the movies with my dad. And he has that that tether so to speak Mm -hmm. um but it's really interesting i was wondering we never heard the conversation like when he went hey dad guess what i'm going to be playing at lincoln center that's the good news um but it's going to be with that terrence fletcher guy like what do you think he would have said like are you sure you want to do this no he said i'm not letting my son go back (laughs) to this relationship i'm like it would have been a bad conversation an interesting one though that i was also curious to see i would uh, bringing up like if i say one thing that was I'm not sure if I'm happy about it being left out of this movie or not, was in most musical films, we get a very large percentage of the love or the care for yeah, the music. Yeah, not that at all. Um, it's normally like 
eighty percent of like passionate for mm. music scenes, and like twenty percent of this is the work, this is the downside. <laughs> and this one got kind of flipped on its head, where it was eighty percent of the blood, sweat, and tears, and about twenty percent of the I care about this. Well, one of this was if you look at the jazz club scene where Fletcher's actually playing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they do give that moment where he like seems to be invested mm -hmm. in the in the piano playing or in, in yeah. the music. Well, it's such a distinctive just... look at music because it does treat mm -hmm. music like a sport and not a passion. You yes. know, during that dinner table scene, they sit, uh, when he says he's like one of the best drummers in the world and they say, isn't music subjective? And he just says, no. no. In, yeah. this, in this world, music is not subjective. It's about hitting exact beats and being exactly on key at all times. And it was that. Yeah, was and that's, that's also <laughs> go, speaks to her point where it's really not about the art of music. It's much more about the technique. Of right. Which is why it's so stressful. You know, but but <laughs> see, I, I don't know. I, I did look at his passion for drumming. I mean, the photos, he had Buddy Rich yeah. was mm -hmm. taped up and, sure. and jazz, you know, these famous jazz drummers. I believe that he has the passion. And again, if you... He wasn't listening no, to today's music. No, I think, I think for me, the point was that it's really not about the art side of music. It's really more about mm -hmm. the technique side. Uh, for me, I, I, mm -hmm. I don't really get that. Uh, what's his name? So Fletcher really is that interested in the no, artistic side of it. Not at all. I don't all. think it's he's interested in that. It's completely well, see, like I, boot camp I, I won't give it at all. I give it a, a 20, 80%. And the 20% mm -hmm. is those little glimpses where he does kind of like, or when he says um, his student that passed away was yeah. a beautiful player. Like, and he, he doesn't focus on him being a good person or a good student or, or that or anything. he's dead. I, he seems to be more upset that he <laughs> the, the, we, yeah. lost a beautiful player that, of music. That and that to me, person, yeah, but we, that to me implies yeah. some love of the yeah. art of the sound. So that's what I'm saying. I'm not giving I, yeah. it 100% like just practice, but I'm giving or, it. Or because it could also be taken as there's another one who's not going to be a Jolly Parker. Damn, yeah. it's not about the fact that a human being died. No. It's just well, it's no, that, purely right. about the that and of also this that and also the scene just before that where Sibbins gets the call about Sean Casey dying and then mm -hmm. Edgy walks in like I want the part and he mm -hmm. blows up at him mm -hmm. but in a way that's different than the ways you've seen him blow up at him before where he seems like uncontrolled and genuinely emotional mm -hmm. it's those the Sean Case the Sean Casey moments are the only places where you really see Simmons let his guard down mm -hmm. and I think it adds this kind of fascinating dimension to the character where you see this is a, a human being yeah and <laughs> you know and again though I think that with music and particularly jazz but you can look at it at rock you know as rock music I've loved music since I was a kid um, I've loved drums. Uh, I took drums for, you know, about five mm -hmm. minutes as a kid. My favorite drummer was Stuart Copeland mm -hmm. of The Police. Um, one of the reasons why is because he's a rock drummer mm -hmm. um, who knew some jazz and, and rhythms, but he drummed like the traditional drummer. Mm -hmm. he, didn't, he didn't drum like this. And he was just amazing. I could be mesmerized watching people do that, do, you know, work that hard behind a kit. Now... I just think that when we are talking about this, the physicality in the sports, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. I think there was a passion on Miles, uh, on Andrew's part. Mm -hmm. He wanted this. With jazz, there are notes. You have to be precise. Mm -hmm. There has to be that certain kind of time. And if you're working with a Brantford Marsalis or, or mm -hmm. the Marsalis family or anybody, you know, they're when you listen to jazz and and you can change rhythms and beats so quickly and right. then a drummer can counterman that beat to make mm -hmm. music and to have drums make music uh, as opposed we're all used to listening to guitars <laughs> and to the bass and to piano for that matter you know but but drums are very rhythmic and can make their own like music so i think that the precision in jazz yeah. mm -hmm. is far so more so than than most any other um outside of maybe classic I mean this cinematic right moment in particular to bring up this and also Birdman which had this very strong drumming uh, s score if you have if you've mm -hmm. seen the movie Birdman for some reason I think there's a couple movies now that are using this extremely percussive drum based kind of music and it and it, it just adds like an energy and and like a driving force mm -hmm. to the movie that's yeah. I think amazing so well, I will say one thing about the physicality. I thought for me it was a little overplayed. <laughs> oh, and the drummers are going to hate me for this, but when he was starting to get his blister and yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there's blood like, all over the snares, I was like, "Oh, he has a blister." Well, Honestly, I swear to God, I started laughing because it's like well, I'm that's... supposed to feel horrible for. All I could think of was uh, Dire Straits, "Money for Nothing." And <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> you maybe get a blister on your finger, maybe get a blister on your thumb. I'm just going, yeah. 
Oh, oh and then it, then the, the 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 shot with the pitcher of ice water and it all turns red. I'm going, please, that's a little much. It's a blister. It's a little much. It's a horrible blister. And I was well, thinking of all you know but, guys that spend their lives in you know coal mines. I go, please stop already. Okay, well, <laughs> you know, it's funny that you say that because they showed this movie to people who like are part of. Um, uh, Brentford Marsalis is right. live at Lincoln Center mm-hmm. Jazz, uh, which you can listen on Sirius, mm-hmm. uh, Sirius Satellite Radio if you have it, Sirius XM. Um, now they showed it to them, mm-hmm. and they said, "So, what did you think? How true was it? Like, was it? Did you have teachers like that?" And one of them said, "Nah, sort of." And he's like, "Really?" He goes, "Were we too hard?" He goes, "No, you weren't hard enough." <laughs> he goes, "I had." He goes. That blood, he goes. That's. That, I believe it, it happens. Enough. Yeah, no, I get that part. And, I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but it was but like, just, oh, it's like, oh, so tra. It wasn't. It's a friggin' blister. It's not that tragic. It's not supposed to be. I don't know, but, but if you're tragic, drumming, but that's but uh, that's I'm, how far it came across. It was overplayed to the point where I started it's, going, please, it, enough already. I get it. It's genuinely physically demanding. The way playing. I'm not saying no, it isn't. I'm saying it's overplayed and getting an injury. I think what you're trying to say, what I'm getting from is, and I agree with you. Is that it's not like he lost the, the, finger. the blister? Yes, it's like the blister got what ten different frames. Yeah, and you're <laughs> well, talking, and blisters. if you're comparing that to people who do like in other fields of work get much worse injuries. Yes, you got a blister. It hurts. But if you're scaling the how people get hurt in the work environment on a scale of one to ten, blister is not that far up the list. Like you can talk about how massage therapists, after <laughs> like every two hours, have to ice their hands so they go numb, so they can, get, and that's just, and that's rubbing people. But that is strenuous work as well. But it's just how much you dramatize like that one blister. Is that well, kind of what that, you're saying? Well, what about that car accident? I mean, that was brutal. What he walked away from. <laughs> I, I'm that's not exactly also sure. crazy that's, yeah, and yeah. it's not really going to do the blister <laughs> I, well, I'm not saying yeah, it does I, mean, I will concede to the point that yes a football player hockey player mm-hmm. baseball player can no I, I will concede to that point that yes they can break a limb a mm-hmm. neck um, lose their teeth you know, it, you know and yes that is a far more serious uh, injury that that that, mm-hmm. that player is out for the mm-hmm. season or for their life mm-hmm. you know depending on the, on the on the injury to a musician uh, who's a jazz musician? Like, I get it. There's no. Get, how else right. do you dramatize it? I get yeah. it. I'm not suggesting he shouldn't have it in there. I just right. say, okay. Uh, oh, let's put a second band aid on. Let's. Get, can we move off the blister now? It was just too much. You like the mention? <laughs> That's it it That's was like, a good mention. It. There all is right, blood. There is I mean, blisters. it's not like the movie No Limit when he's running with his foot all cut up and he's <laughs> running a <at> friggin'. <laughs> What is it? Ten miles with his blood, uh, foot bleeding. I mean, that, that's yeah. uh, that's the other I movie could, that this reminded me of. No limits. No. I don't know if anybody saw that, but it's a, that kind, same kind of obsession. Yeah, and again, I was you know who's looking for. Well, he didn't want to lose his 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 stool, mm-hmm. and so uh, you know, and it was uh, so to speak, and and yeah, uh, yeah you know, you, it was acceptance. Uh, you know, I, yeah. I'm gonna power through this mm-hmm. and more or less pass out. Andrew Naiman is this obsessive guy who shuts himself in his room and listens to Buddy Rich tapes and practices drumming over and over again. It doesn't seem like that's the dominant mindset at Schaefer. And I do wonder, like, the other students in Fletcher's class... Well, that's, a, that's when, also part of it that I didn't like. It's like, we don't know. They, but, they but didn't spend guess, any time with anything, so there's been a lot of content. See, to me, that was fine, because I've, I've seen so many movies and so many films about the other people. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, right. I haven't seen this perspective. Hmm, I haven't seen... Like, right. I have seen so many music movies. I've seen people with the love, with the supportive family, mm-hmm. with the making the relationship work, or the biggest trouble is balancing that, or that one of the people is going to go off to another state. Like, I've seen all of the... <laughs> right. I've seen those stories. I can imagine exactly what the other kids mm-hmm. are doing. You know, Fletcher leaves the room, and whoever the new kid's like, man, what's with this guy? And they're yeah. like, oh, it's just that's how Fletcher is. This, don't don't let it bother you. Naaman never has that conversation with anybody. Andrew and most films... <laughs> I and think- other music films is a secondary character. Mm-hmm. He's the secondary character who comes in and shows like how obsessive something can be, how it can be. You can take the love out of something. So it was interesting to me to see his mindset. Um, I didn't see him as that obsessive, honestly. Who? Uh, I, Andrew, Andrew, because I, I, for me, if anybody's going to go to Juilliard or wherever, I'm thinking they were practicing when they go to their room. Yeah. It no, seemed I, like what everybody I, I, else I don't does. I disagree with that. But I, it's like, it's, how do you get to Juilliard? Practice, practice. practice. I mean, that's well, I mean, not, trying to go home. Yeah. Practice, but it's not practice. just about how much you practice. It's about the fact that you're isolating yourself from other students. Yeah. But that's what everybody does who's trying to do that at that yeah. level. No, no, I, I don't. No, that's, no. What, that's my experience. So See, it didn't really seem... I guess that's not mine, especially... If you're going into certain music, it depends on the exact medium in which people are performing. 
for instance, you would think that most percussionists mm -hmm. would need to find other people yeah. to work with. Jazz is a collaborative art form. Yes, because you have a lot of ensemble pieces and forming a band that you can make music with is normally pretty important to a drummer but uh, versus, I don't want to get your argument because I mean, the, the idea is that you don't like, practice are you saying you, you don't practice ever alone because I no what, I think what, you I do but I think yeah. that there are a lot of people involved in music who find joy in practicing with other people oh, I, no, clearly, I, and I, don't I, I don't disagree with that my the way I looked at this what happens in Fight Club stays in Fight Club <laughs> they weren't going to go out and talk about they kept it within their little group. Yeah, I know. They're you know, very... And, and we know that in one way, shape, or form, it got this. out because, well, we had that student who committed suicide. Yeah. And there was a direct relation that the parents mm -hmm. felt. They couldn't quite prove, yeah, but they yeah. felt that it was right. the instructor's fault. Oh, right. I think that's true. Was but you would think, you'd think they would at least talk with each other about, about what's I'm going on. I'm sure yeah. they but do. They, like, yeah, but yeah, not... Yeah. Look, like like, the, like was, they don't have a faculty at this look. place. Like, everybody <laughs> knew what was going on. Nobody ever I think confronts was, him. Nobody ever questions no, I, it. Well, nothing. I, and I get that. It, the, way, the way, again, the way I perceived it, I could be completely off, is, okay, they all know how he is. Mm -hmm. They also know how prestigious it is to, to have that... To be, to be a part of the Yeah, district. but have that be okay. part of the movie. That's great conflict. Well, I, and what I gathered from it is that that one scene that we talked about earlier in which um, he said, okay, so, somebody here is out of key. Somebody mm -hmm. here is off key. Mm -hmm. It was, who is it? Just stand up now. Mm -hmm. uh, are you trying to kibosh? And then he picks out this kid yeah. and he goes, it was you. Are, are you out of key? And mm -hmm. I think that scene alone pretty much set up that People are terrified. They don't want to lose lose their spot, but they're not mm. going to necessarily. They're not going to ne stand up to this guy. Right. And then he says, uh, "Yes, I, I was out of key." And he's like, "Get out! Mm -hmm. Like, leave now! Somebody come in and take his chair." And then he admits, "Is he wasn't out of key at all?" But I don't need anybody who doesn't know that they're out of yeah. key. And then it was right. you. <laughs> and that scene to me set up the fact that these people he has them under such. Such a uh, reign of that, that, that goes to my point I'm making earlier, which, which going gets, down the line. which to me got boring because mm. I knew going in that no one's ever going to come up, no one's ever going to stand up to him, and that, that and when it when it never happened, I went okay. But it's it, just, it was but just it, a repeat of it. But again, even mm -hmm. if even if they never had, even if Andrew never stood up and like, you know what? I don't agree with your methods anymore. You got to listen to me. There was there was a major contest going on between them, and eventually Andrew t made moves that got Fletcher fired. He did take steps. If you look <laughs> well, that, that, at that, even in that scene, Andrew's steps though, <laughs> there was the explained. point where he yelled at him in front of the class, which right. we saw no one else do. Then you see him argue for his part and say that he's right before you, prior to him getting in the car wreck. Right. Then he gets in the car wreck and still. Puts himself on stage and utterly yeah, fails. I, I, I don't, I don't disagree. With that. I don't yeah. disagree with that. But I, I still think that for me, it's a missed opportunity when you show me how capable this guy is, and then you the the only time he confronts him is by doing that, which is nowhere near what he's capable of. Right. And it's just like, well, you just you, that's a character beat that's missing for me. And you set up a, a whole thing that you just let by the wayside. But I understand Andrew's mindset. His mindset is, I'm going to show Fletcher what's what. I'm going to show him by playing the best damn drum solo I, I, I don't think that's what he was doing. <laughs> yeah, we're talking I, don't I don't think he was doing it from that motivation at I, all. Yeah, I think it was like, no, I am going to be the bird. Like, I'm going to be the next bird. Yeah, you, like, th you think I'm nothing. Well, guess what? I'm going to show you how amazing I am. That's well, It's that kind of... Yeah. And to me, uh, that worked when he said, fuck you. Right. And then I'm like, <laughs> going, he goes, because you know what? I deserve this spot and you're not you're not going to bother me anymore i'm going to show off my talents that but then again hard. it's sort but of But then they, for me they ruined it by having him oh Oh, I know where you're going right. here. Let's work together and make yeah, amazing yeah, yeah. music. It's like, whoa, yeah. oh, come on. Yeah, the yeah, whole no, movie is no. predicated I, on I, that. I, you know what? And and that to me was like... Fell to pieces. I didn't get as angry as you did, but I got um, saddened. Um, like, it, 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 it bothered me because, again, he he got that acceptance that he wanted, that mm -hmm. he is a great drummer, and that, that, that he wanted to be. And he's like, okay, you can... Beat me some more. I'm gonna stick around with you so you can whip See, me some more. See, and to me, it fit their relationship. To me, it was just no. It's not where I. This is not the world that I want to be a part of, no. or be close to, <laughs> or be like have involved in my Far life. Away. But it was interesting to watch. Right. And like. Right, and I think and, I, I think on some sick yeah. level, this is what Andrew wants. He wants the guy who's going to just try to discourage him with everything he can and, put, and eventually push him to his limit. Yeah. Most students aren't necessarily going to be like that. 
But yeah. I think the I think what makes this dynamic work is the fact that student and teacher are kind of equally matched, and they finally end up on the same page by the end, which makes a weird, sick, happy ending. Yeah, well, and <laughs> to me, it just thing. becomes a whole thing. Well, yeah, I'll show you. Oh, yeah, I'll yeah, show you, exactly, and then that, exactly. that that gets boring. Mm. That's like okay, great, here we go. I was that, I was thrilled by that. The, I, wasn't. I mean, I again, I was the ending the acceptance sort of kind of like oh you're accepting it like mm -hmm. when i thought you, you you were like to me to me what my perfect ending would have been and you know this is just mm -hmm. me is if he gets out there fuck you he <laughs> does this drumming and when he's that done that's that's what i was thinking he fucking throws the six at him and goes now i quit now it's time now i can go you don't predicate you know maybe one of the yeah. six gets Right in his eye, like a horror <laughs> movie. I would have been, I would have been, like that would have been, like okay, you know what, Andrew, mm -hmm. you learned something. You would have had, an, like, there would have been an arc. It though. would have been like you came, you rose from the ashes. And again, any good, it to me, it's almost like this wasn't even like the drawer at the end of Rocky. Yeah, <laughs> like you know, I mean, don't want one. Yeah, I mean, he Rocky sticks through it to the end and you're happy that he does in this movie he sticks through it to the end but like you know that a little well his humanity a big piece of his humanity just died when he yeah. like smiled and said oh okay yeah teacher, i i see some more <laughs> i see two like messed up abusive self-centered people who kind of deserve each other having this moment of triumph at the end I kind, of, I kind of agree with you i think it's interesting we haven't talked about how this movie came to really be made um off a short I, it's off right. a short i mean the movie was written as i believe an 85 page script and then mm -hmm. couldn't get funding was blacklisted mm -hmm. and then they made a short to raise funding Went you see that you see this more and more now as kind of the proof of concept short where they'll film like a scene or two mm -hmm. from a script to show people hey this is what it could do with the full movie yeah so they did that and it worked yeah Congrats it, to it, it sort of worked i mean it, it, it worked like, that I mean, they were it able to make the that they feature. were able to make the film but even with the short yeah they were still having a hard time. Like they were still having a hard time because it was jazz. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if it wasn't for Blumhouse who came in and 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 helped fund out how to do, yeah. and uh, and and get that done, and then Sony Classics who handled the distribution for this, you know. And and to your point, yes, I mean, saw mm -hmm. saw the entire franchise relied on a short. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. In, in in filming the head trap scene, that was all they had to go around to show people. We're gonna see Whiplash two when they tour together. Yes. <laughs> Well, you know, it's funny that you, one thing that we didn't talk about too, and we'll get more into the origins and some more tech stuff, but mm -hmm. the type of jazz music that Fletcher was playing was so different than the jazz music that he was teaching, that he was orchestrating. Mm -hmm. I thought that to be a very fascinating dichotomy. I mean, he's in a club playing smooth jazz, like mm -hmm. basically, mm -hmm. where the jazz that he's teaching mm -hmm. um, is a little bit more big band. Mm -hmm. Well, that was kind to of soften him up so we could have that scene right after. Well, I just, could... again, though, it's one of those things like we never saw him play drums. Mm -hmm. uh, we, you know, the, the only instrument we see him play is piano. No, and I don't think and, he's supposed to be a great musician. And, and I think he says in that, if that scene afterwards, you know, I was... Uh, what I see is my purpose is to inspire people to greatness. That's what he is all about, not necessarily being the center of greatness himself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, even that, it, that it's like, okay, that's great. That's wonderful motivation, but there's no, no comeback, no challenge to that. It's just like, really? Uh, it, well, then why don't you have all these Charlie Parkers? Maybe it's not your students, but it might be your method. Right. No, they, I, but there's nothing. But like I think that. there's it's a greater belief that there should only be very, very, very few Charlie Parker. But but if it's, <laughs> but it's, yeah, there, maybe there should. But if if he's so good at his job, it, why doesn't he push himself to the degree? That I don't know. I don't. I didn't, I didn't need a character to say that. I think that was implied by the film. I don't think it was because it, again, if he's so good, or, or if he believes in that kind of perfection, why didn't he apply that same kind of stuff to himself? And he doesn't. Well, we sort of know that he's good because it is mentioned how many times they've gone through competition coming out mm -hmm. as being number one so he's able to and at least in that at least in that capacity but if his method is that i have to just I have to beat the, hell out of the crap oh. out of people so that i can develop these charlie parkers why isn't he better at it yeah 
Oh, well, he says he's never found a Charlie Parker. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah. saying. Maybe it's not the per- maybe it's not the pupil. It's the method. But, but I, I think, but I think, a, Charlie, I think a, a Charlie Parker's a once way. a Charlie Parker's a once in a lifetime. Thing, right, and but. to assume that the <laughs> only way we can get one is by this method is ridiculous. That's why the oh, plausibility see, to me, flag. Like, see, to me that works because I think there are people like this. Like, it's kind of like you give a bunch of kids, you know, is, golden tickets to the chocolate factory, but only one of them is going to make it through to the this very end. This is his solution. <laughs> this is how it works. This is the this. It's and, not, and yet it hasn't it's at not, all for him. So that's why I'm just going, okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I no totally get what you're saying. And he used the Charlie no. Parker, but again, mm-hmm. since since Andrew's a drummer, and you know, there are let's say great yeah, Miles drummers. Davis. He knows Miles Davis quit Juilliard in yeah. his you know freshman or whatever first sure. semester, whatever. It's like you've got to be aware of that if you're aware of the other. Also, apparently, right. so. Joe Jones never actually threw a symbol at Charlie Parker's head. Uh, at his feet. Yeah, he he like he th- yeah. threw a symbol at the ground essentially, and kind of scared mm-hmm. Parker. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah. and it wasn't off losing the tempo; <laughs> right. it was off of missing a key change. Yeah, I think that I was think. right. Oh, yeah. I think that was right. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I wasn't some there. things were a little dramatized for the movie. Of course. Well, yeah, but, but here's the thing, and that's another thing where I go, well, why your guy but who knows everything about Buddy Rich and he's so obsessive, he doesn't learn that? He doesn't know that that story is not accurate? I mean, he I, again, I'm just saying that for me, I go, that's, that's you could have been such great character and fun stuff. Like you say, these verbal sparrings could have been much more interesting if he had had them backed up with anything. And for me, just didn't. You know, I... I I'm going to agree with you. Like, I think that had Andrew gone, well, you know, that's not the way I, the way I've studied it is that he threw yeah. it at his feet. Would and he didn't far more to intriguing to me. Well, again, in the world of this so, film, I think that is supposed to be a true story. Yeah. That they fudged a little bit for the script. But sure. this is supposed to be a real it's a, it's a, re, it's so, a realistic I mean, story. Exactly. But. So they fudged. But here's the thing. My point is he obviously, in my mind, Fletcher obviously fudges that to justify his teaching method to, right not not because that's what the real story is for the movie i think it, that he says oh, it that see, way I to justify it, yeah. i took no, it as I, it's a fact of the film yeah definitely i didn't yeah, at I, all I, I say it that because he said it twice i say he does it to just he, he said it, it to justify he, yeah he does it to just he even says if i can get a charlie parker from beating people down yeah that's then i've done do. my job and that's why he says that story twice mm-hmm. in the movie he says it he says it once. And, and how sure, quick, he how quick it was it for you guys yeah. to figure out that it wasn't actually accurate? Well, I had to, I I had to look it up Until I was yeah. looking uh, up yeah. the story there. Uh, I know. It took, what, all of 10 seconds? Oh, yeah. But again, again, though, I don't think, so. I don't think that actually... He might have been using that story to justify his own bullshit. I think oh. it completely was, but that doesn't mean it wasn't true in the world of the movie. It's no, no, no I'm not saying that it wasn't. <laughs> no, I, I how could it be but that poetic was, license? It's right there for no, everybody to know. He was taking real. It's a real fabrication of, of no, an actual no, event I, to me the I, only thing that i would say and i don't know if this is accurate or not it's just maybe playing a little bit of devil's advocate is in the research that i did find the true story on mm-hmm. it was based off a statement that came out after the movie was made mm-hmm. where basically the movie happened and then someone came out and went actually that's not exactly that's what not happened. what I heard, but okay, it's so, not what I read. Excuse yeah, me. so it could I could read different than you. I mm-hmm. do know that well, the article I read did say that someone came out and in rebuttal to the film said this. So yeah, it I just don't buy the idea that, the that get, it's such a it's it's too much of a cheat for me in the, in a script to lay that thing there and knowing that it's not the real story. Let's just pretend. By the way, for this movie, we're gonna pretend that it happened this way. Well, this is too much of a cheat. Mm-hmm. Well, that that was sort of kind of my my issues with Dallas Buyers Club. Right, I understand um, what you're saying. So, but but I do agree with you that I felt that it was a thing of motivation. Yeah, it had nothing just... to do. I mean, again, he 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 admits it, and he says, "Well, if he can, if he can throw a symbol at his head, mm-hmm. and then he goes, he goes, I can throw chairs, and I can I can say, you know, I can." insult people and use their race against them and yeah. say all these nasty mm-hmm. things. Oh, yeah. I, had this movie throw, I had a teacher throw markers, pens, and books. No. No chairs. I there was think. a teacher at my high school who threw a textbook at a kid's head got yeah. fired afterwards. Oh, we, he didn't yeah. get fired at ours. <laughs> <laughs> he got an award. I guess our school year. was kind of a pussy school. Yeah. I don't know. We got mul- <laughs> Can't mul- handle having textbooks thrown at their head. It was mostly like pens. Mostly yeah. pens. <laughs> so, but there was a couple like books and binders yeah no i, I agree i, think I just thought there was incredibly uh, a, an incredible lack of creativity on fletcher the character side to think that this is the only way to motivate people and i, I don't care what his you obsession know, is i just think it's incredibly it shows an incredible lack of creativity and for me uh, looking at it in script wise i think that shows an incredible lack of tra- creativity too as well not to uh, try to do more with that Particular, uh, he definitely had some creative insults. I sort of kind of, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and true. I sort of kind of go by the fact that 
some people are just mean. Yeah, like they're just fine. mean. And 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 again, like I, I again, the mean whatever harshness that I that I that I endured, it wasn't to make me a better person. Mm-hmm. It was just because they were flat out mean. Yeah. Now yeah. again, I, I agree, I, but that doesn't make I, for an, for me. It doesn't make for an interesting movie. Yeah. Okay, he's gonna be mean. There's nothing. There's nothing new. You. you but it's the, the first it's the ten way minutes. He, it's let me finish my thought, was. please. Let me finish my thought. In the first ten minutes, whatever first experience they have with each other. Oh, okay. Like when he's getting that information, then he uses it. You just go, okay. That's the rest of the movie. There's nothing more to see. Every time they get, he's gonna manipulate, yell, berate, demean, all the other stuff. He's gonna go at and show. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Watch this, and then it's like, okay, great. Let's just get to the end. But it's not that one-sided relationship. It's the way that him and Andrew are, are feeding off each other and playing it's with each other. It's the same thing, same scene over and yeah, over. It's and, just, and, here's, I'm and gonna I'll yell go, and you. If you look at it, if you look you. at it from the point of one person's loss of humanity, mm-hmm. which is essentially what happens to Andrew, to our to our hapless hero or protagonist, is that throughout the movie, like we see, and again, the way I looked at the movie is at the very beginning, he was like really hurt that mm-hmm. he couldn't please this guy. But then mm-hmm. we see him with his dad and we see sort of kind of like a normal relationship. We see that he likes girls mm-hmm. and then he's shy. Okay, and that goes back to the band geek nerd kind of like, you know, uh, and and when he finally asked her out, I mean, he was having a great day. Mm-hmm. I mean, he just got accepted into this guy's orchestra to be an alternate. And then he goes and asks the girl out. And that was sort of kind of awkward. But she said yes. Yeah. And he's like really happy. He's really proud of himself. And then we start to see that get stripped away, like beat by beat. No mm-hmm. pun intended. Yeah, and by the end of the movie, it's, it's like, do we but, do we lament his loss of humanity? Are we happy for Andrew, or do we lament his see, loss of humanity? Uh, for me, for I, me, I lamented his loss of humanity. I, I did too. For me, I, I, I was did. there to observe. But <laughs> I also think for, and again, this is what, I'll, go, I'll I'll say this one more time, and then I'll get off this point. Mm-hmm. Is that it seems to me it's much more interesting of a a, a duel between the two uh, as they're circling around each other. If he can really match him, if he went back and went. Charlie Parker, let me see. and he and he checks and goes, you know, I checked that, and but so again, then think, he comes back. You, I think let me you finish go, my point, right, thanks. Right. Me, so if and now you really got stuff happening because then right. you have scenes that you don't know what's going to happen mm-hmm. and who is really going to and to to not have that, it just kind of falls flat. It's mm-hmm. like who cares? I'll keep saying that I think if the fictional Andrew Naiman used fictional Google in this fictional movie, he would see that Joe Jonas really did throw a symbol at Charlie Parker said. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna debate whether he <laughs> threw it in his head or not. He just used it as a tool of to justify right. his action. Yeah, sure, but yeah. I mean, but if, right. but if if our guy, our lead, calls that into question, then you've right. got something happening. You've got I some stuff with, happening. And, and I don't disagree with you, and I don't disagree with you because in this world, I don't care whether or not right. he f- right. finds the Pope. <laughs> sure. Joe, what would bother sure. me was that he never. There was never any you know, pushback on any of it. I think but, you have your facts wrong, sir. Or, 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 and it doesn't no, even have to be about saying. that. It has to just like, okay, yeah. you, you I never... Think, I, I think this was, is just the world that they that, that was created. Mm-hmm. Uh, we can talk about the language, because that was another thing that was holding the movie back from being made. The language? It, oh, yeah. Well, the language... Well, the, yeah, the, hom- the homophobic the, language oh, that, and uh, the, the, the racial slurs. I'm just going to say the impolitically correctness of, <laughs> of, of, of certain things. Mm-hmm. And... And, that um, was holding really. They they had concerns yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. They, they said that it was over the top. But Damien fought for it. He's like, really? I'm I not going to tone uh, it down. Goes, no, no, I thought you you have to have that. I I mean, the whole thing is dehumanizing, and that's I the point of it. Don't disagree, and that's that's the point. Full Metal Jacket drill sergeant yep, stuff. Yeah. Yep. And, and again, though, I think it gets it's so weird. It's like when you watch it in a movie like Full Metal Jacket, mm-hmm. you. It's the army. Like these yeah. people have to be trained a certain no, way. And and, blah blah blah. Yeah. But when you're talking, and you break about people music, down to build them back up. That's right. what you do. And uh, you I don't. Know, I don't. Back up I, exactly. Like, there's none of that in this because that's um, not who he is. You and, realize. But he, we don't not see not it from a music side. We no. don't see that drill sergeant on the music side of things, and that's what I found very interesting about this movie. And I loved how it used jazz instead of rock and roll because jazz can't. Like, yes, you can have soft rock. You can mm-hmm. have heavy metal, thrash rock punk rock um pop rock whatever but in jazz again jazz can be a miasma of different beats and Mm -hmm. and collusion and coming together to make a music right and it's a collaborative kind of thing so i love that it was jazz Mm -hmm. and 
I think the jazz is as much a character. It, I completely agree. Yeah, the, the precision that. of that music, and mm-hmm. and also and the precision of the editing throughout. Not just the sound editing; all the editing was fantastic. And, Couldn't mm-hmm. agree with you more. And again, yeah. I do liken it to again. My friend Peter Block said it was edited like an action movie, and when I thought about it. It was. I mean, when you go back to a symbol that has a ton of sweat. I mean, it was like a Tony Scott film for crying out loud. <laughs> yeah. the, the symbol was sweating with blood dripping I know, down. I was like, oh again, and that, yeah. I, I, to that, okay, yeah. The yeah, only yeah, thing yeah, that was yeah, missing yeah, was please. a ceiling fan. I know. Yeah. And the and art again, of that drum the solo and the the whip pans, the close ups, and the Dutch angles, and it's so but, dynamically filmed. It, yeah, and it was just like again that the caravan. Mm-hmm. Okay. And how they had to film that, and he, he had that all storyboarded out, and he had to have like, okay, Miles, we're gonna do measures of sixteen to eighteen right now. Okay, we we have this, we have the music. Okay, so now we're gonna focus on the symbols. Oh wait, we mm. we need continuity yeah. because we have the audience out there. <laughs> Collaborative effort, mm-hmm. I think, goes into this movie. Absolutely, and it was but that, very quickly. And yeah. nineteen yeah, days, nineteen and days, do all these shots. It was, and that's crazy. And I and that's why I said at the beginning of this, I wish the music held. I mean, the film held up to the music because of the way that jazz and the intercut and the all that, uh, what which seems complex to me, was uh, mirrored in their relationship. I didn't find it complex. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Which I did. I mean, I got. I was like you, <clears throat> but I did. It was like a. It was an action film, sports film. Like I was on the edge of my seat. Who's gonna win? And then I was just like, "Oh my See, god!" I knew you're I, yeah. your I really, really, I, you didn't Great. know what was gonna happen all along because I, you know, he's not going away. You know, at the, you know, when the whole thing is set up, hey, come, come, join me at the end. I mean, I you, found it pretty legitimately unpredictable throughout. Yeah, uh, no, coming down. down the street. I knew See, that he was gonna. What I didn't foresee, mm-hmm. I thought we were gonna leave it off on the. Fuck you. <laughs> Throw the sticks. Yeah. I am good, damn it. Right. And and then a couple of weeks later, get a letter from Blue Note saying, Hey, we want to sign you. Mm-hmm. Like something like that. Like to me, yeah, that would be that's like wrapped up a little too. I know. But, I know, that's, but that's I what know. you're saying is what you thought but it might happen. I thought that that, mm-hmm. but instead we get, we don't, I mean, maybe he gets that job with Blue Note and then he's mm-hmm. just a complete asshole to everybody. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it was an interesting way mm-hmm. to end a movie. And I have to say, like, I almost feel like we're back in the 70s again mm-hmm. because the, the, the most recent mm-hmm. rash of movies that have been coming out, things mm-hmm. like Gone Girl and we're going to talk Nightcrawler and things. But the endings have been not the best. Like, they're not mm-hmm. knee-slapping, mm-hmm. happy endings, so to speak. Oh. And, and I think- Go ahead. And I think jumping on to that, that's what kept it unpredictable for me Mm -hmm. was because as soon as they, what I recognized in their relationship is that there was nothing that was kind of off limits on how far to push someone. Hmm. Um, And it did get addressed with the car accident, but like you didn't know the results of it. And when they introduced also like the suicide, the death of his other student, Mm -hmm. but we didn't know it was a suicide at first. We just Mm -hmm. knew it was the death. Yeah, we that later. Like... That to me was like, what is this saying? Like, how far can he actually push him? And is it going to be far enough that he becomes the next bird and Mm -hmm. is able to do something genius? Or is it going to be so far that he also goes down that same path and one of of them or someone ends up dead or something very... Exactly. Worse than bloodied hands and blisters. <laughs> yeah, he was gonna die. He was gonna stroke so out and play drums. That's what seriously. Yeah. That's what kept me part of me so anxious the whole time because mm. I, I couldn't find the limits on what he was willing to take, and what uh. Fletcher's willing to put him through. Yeah, anything could. For, for all we know, like uh, Andrew might have murdered Fletcher by the end of the movie. It, there's that level of intensity. Or like, <laughs> or like broken the other drummer's hands. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Or some like I didn't know if it was going to get that extreme. See, I never what? thought of the movie that way. I didn't either. I never thought of the movie. I did. No. I did. I, 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 th- I thought it could. It had, I just sparring. thought it had the potential to go either way, where it's like he's either going to succeed at some point and be talented and like show some grand performance. Or he's going to fail, and he's going to be, fail while pushing himself too hard. And, and the failure yeah. aspect was was, was was coming up, um, I mean, because, well, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, he's out mm-hmm. of the class and, and whatnot, and he's taken to uh, being a barista mm-hmm. or whatever, somewhere yeah. or whatever right. he is. Mm-hmm. Now, here's an interesting question, and this, this, the same gentleman that made the action, Peter, uh, the action analogy, Peter Block brought this up. Uh, so he calls Nicole uh-huh. up mm-hmm. towards 
you know, when he's out of school and whatever. Which doesn't make any sense to me. But yeah, I don't know how that. Why how, he called her? Why? Well, yeah, he was I he was regretful why. about what happened. Why? No, I, the way I you guys could, described him, he wouldn't have regret in his arsenal of emotions. <laughs> <Yeah>. I could. <laughs> What's that? It was I just mean, out of experience. There's a couple of voicemails that I've gotten that are very interesting and very random. It made no sense well, to me it, it, whatsoever. Well, it was it was a bold call to make, but here here's the question that was posed. Um, because she, you know he invites her to the Lincoln Center, mm-hmm. and she says, "I'll have to check with my boyfriend." Mm-hmm. Did she really have a boyfriend, or did she not have yes, a boyfriend? Yes, she does, because um, his his uh, Miles Teller's roommate was supposed to play him in a scene. Just oh, just throwing so you that know. out there. I don't know, but don't care, <laughs> but not but not knowing that it's 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 totally possible she could have been lying just based on what's in the script. Mm-hmm. It oh, is, I'm not but, talking you know. about. I'm not talking about in the scripts his roommate. Right. I'm talking about right. his, I believe, actual roommate. Oh, I know. I, I know what you mean. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> just checking. That that thing like, implied, but yeah. but just based on what's what's in the mm-hmm. film, she could he, he, she he she could have been lying about it. She could have. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I it was just an interesting question. I just thought I'd throw that matzo ball on the table here and mm-hmm. see what we yeah. all thought. And, so. But look, at the end of the film, Fletcher never gets his comeuppance. Fletcher gets a victory. He gets a win. He finds the incredibly talented student he's been looking for. And I think that's what makes this interesting is there is there's ambiguity here and you can walk out of the movie and I think people will have different reactions. Whether yeah. Fletcher's methods were right in this particular case or whether he's he's just a monster. No, and I, and I agree with you. When J.K. Simmons has said, he says one of the things that really intrigued him about this movie mm-hmm. and after watching it was the ambiguity and how mm-hmm. it can be divisive. And, and, and a good movie can, can spark this kind of a conversation. Yes, and it and, should. And, yeah, and, and it makes it fun for us, <laughs> um, I think. And and, um, you know, when we talk about these sort of kind of things, um, but we should talk a little bit, too. I mean, listen, uh, this movie came out October 10th, uh, mm-hmm. opened up extremely limited. It played on like six six locations and um, it opened up at number 34 mm-hmm. at the box office um, and it, it, it did 135K. On mm-hmm. its opening weekend in just 34 locations, uh, somebody do the math quickly. I think that's right. 22,000 or math. something. I don't know. <laughs> Respectable. But I mean, th- thus far, I mean, right now, I believe it's in 88 locations uh, across the country. I know it opens wider yeah. this upcoming week, I believe the 14th. Um, to date, it's about 1.6 million total gross world uh and so, which is not too bad for a movie that's nice, only at 88 good. locations. And we've got... Uh, the movie is about three million to make, three point yeah. three million. And they're or obviously so. not spending a lot on advertising, <laughs> since I haven't seen any advertising yeah. except for people who are either critics or fans, and they're the ones posting about it's it. It's the slow roll because it's going to be in theaters for a while, and it's going to get the Oscar push. I mean, Simmons is a lock for a nomination, if nothing else. Yeah, I mean, I I, I don't disagree with that. I mean, I, I so. um, had learned about this again from the same guy. Uh, I had heard about it because there was a lot of buzz coming out of Sundance about this movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, as far as the TV ads, you're right. But unlike John, I do enjoy <laughs> watching trailers. And trailers <laughs> and footage have been online. Mm-hmm. They've been building to this. And, and the buzz has, has been... Mm-hmm. has been building as well. It's at a, currently a 97% on Rotten yeah. Tomatoes. Uh, no cinema score as of yet because it's just not wide enough to start polling the, the, the audiences mm-hmm. coming out. But, you know, the critics are loving this. J.K. Simmons, I think this elevates, you know... I'm, oh, yeah, uh, that you know, puts him on a whole other level. Yeah, mm-hmm. but yeah. And, and uh, again, we talked before. I think Miles Teller is getting... In a sense, shortchanged. Mm-hmm. I'm not blaming J.K. Oh, Simmons. I'm not. See, right. I don't think Miles <laughs> Teller is getting shortchanged. I, I think, think so many people are talking about him, and on the heels wait, of wait, uh, uh, regarding, elaborate on that. I, We're talking about him. How? Um, as he, he's an indie darling who's also coming out in blockbusters. Mm-hmm. Whether it's be, it's a lot of this talk is in conjunction with talking about Shailene Woodley, mm-hmm. how they did um, Spectacular Now, right. and then talking about Divergent, how he's coming out with this. Oh, sure, he's a star on the rise. Yeah. For sure. It's, no, but that'll happen after Fantastic Four. I'm not hearing. <laughs> I'm hearing mo- whenever I, in, especially doing research on this mm-hmm. movie, it was J.K. Simmons. Like, I guess, yeah, well, yeah, Miles because like, we back. haven't seen anything. Well, also, honestly, I'll, I don't think Miles did much that we it, haven't seen. The people before I'm either. talking about. No, no, I'm just saying. Yeah, it's, it's, no, I didn't say he just didn't do a, do a good job. I thought he did a good job. I'm just saying we haven't seen J.K. Simmons do anything like this, and that's the character. Jonah Jameson, Spider Man. Or you could go all the way back that, to Oz. Yeah, he was terrifying in that. I'm going to talk about just the fact that I think the people who I've heard talking about it, mm-hmm. which is a lot of people who are, I guess, my age group, right out of college right. or kind of into like the new this 
the same age bracket. Mm -hmm. They're talking about him, Miles. They're talking about who to look out for, who's around our ages. And but I'm not, seeing him, I'm, I'm not seeing him yeah, being okay. talked about in Entertainment Weekly as much. No. Most, of the reviews well, that, yeah, I, most of the reviews I've seen from this have been like, uh, Simmons is obviously amazing, yes. but we also have to point out how good mm. Teller is. Right. He's, I think that's he's getting kind of second shrift. Yeah. But that's because we know Jake, I'm not, I'm not saying he did a great job in Oz, but we, right now, you just said it uh, earlier in the thing, he's the insurance guy. He's the, you know, that's how we know of him now. He played the blind guy in that sitcom. Right. We were not in the zeitgeist right now. Wow, where did this guy come from? Because we didn't. That's why it's not we that he hasn't done great work. Where he came of from. course, and just, and just knowing he's been around no, forever. No, I'm, just like I'm saying that yeah. that's yeah. good for us. And yeah. just knowing like uh, Hollywood politics. He's. Yeah. I think he's just a really beloved guy in Hollywood, mm -hmm. and he's been a character actor who's been working for a long time. Yeah. I think for a lot a of people, sentimental favorite. Yeah, for sure, yeah. A sentimental favorite. Because he'll be my friend. But I, I just, I think Miles did a fine job. I just don't think he did anything groundbreaking. And you know, there was a couple, uh, some really obvious choices as an actor. I was like, eh. they even had a, the, the trite thing about touching feet under the table. I was like, oh boy, okay. <laughs> I'm not blaming him script. for that. I'm just giving that's the kind of flavor I got on I some of his uh, performances, especially with her. It was like, it was obvious and, you know, didn't nothing I, really. I thought he was great. I mean, I thought what he poured into this movie, um, you know. It was a lot of blood and sweat. A lot of blood, sweat, and tears, um, <laughs> saliva. Um, I also felt like, again, you know, I was a huge fan. I was a huge fan of um, Spectacular Now. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, one of my proudest things was that I was able to tell Shailene Woodley about how amazing mm -hmm. I thought that that movie was and how it portrayed alcoholism amongst mm -hmm. teens and that her and Miles Teller I thought he was fantastic in that mm -hmm. movie this movie may not I'll give have him given spectacular him as much. now I won't give him di divergent well I, I'm <laughs> not gonna yeah but yeah, but, but again I can't fault the guy for taking the um I can't fault the guy for taking those kind of a role. Um, he was talking about how he was in a um, in one of his classes. I guess Joe Pantaleone came in, mm -hmm. and the question Joey Pants, that, Joey Pants, and uh, and he was asked like, so how do you pick your movies? Do you get your movies? And the advice was, do three movies a year. You do one for the money, one for the location, and one for the artistic <laughs> thing. And you if know, you can it's, get three movies, if you yeah. can get yeah. three, but yeah, and. Yes. You know, but, but I think somebody thing, like yeah. Miles Teller and Shailene Woodley, sure. I think that, you know, they are... He'll be fine. He has his cred yeah. now. He'll and he's going to be in Fantastic Four, yeah. um, although it remains to be seen how they'll do, but... Who's he supposed to be in Fantastic Four? Uh, I think... Don't quote me. Uh -oh. <laughs> Pardon me, Marvel comic book fans, Steve but Richards. I believe he's Steve. He's Steve Richards. He's who's? Uh, I thought. Oh, that's right. Mr. Fantastic. He's, that's right. He is Mr. He's Fantastic. Mr. Fantastic. So this is like a young Fantastic Four. Wow. Yeah. Well, not. Okay. A, I mean, not a bad move. That's, that's right because they they changed ethnicity on uh, on the Human Torch. That's right. So cool. We'll, uh, okay. So uh, <laughs> yeah. So I mean. Yeah, they're doing a whole whole reboot, but this is that you know this is that that could be his Hunger Games. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't fault Jennifer Lawrence for taking Hunger Games, but when you watch her in her other movies, she's so above Hunger Games. Like, I get it; she's making a ton of money mm -hmm. off of making those movies. She's good yeah, at it. You got to do both. If Jennifer Lawrence just kept doing Winter's Bone, she wouldn't be you know the star. But she, she did is. Silver Linings <laughs> Playbook and mm -hmm. and American House. I mean, she's a great actress. Yeah, she just happened. She was very lucky with Hunger Games and I don't fault her for taking it <laughs> but after watching those other movies I always look at her and say god she's what? so above yeah what and I think she's a very good mystique in the X-Men movies true I thank you I said yeah I forgot about that too All right, whatever we covered yeah absolutely what have we, we've what have done we? music <laughs> we've done how this came about we've done our acting we've done our scenes um, well we haven't really talked about the director we liked it Damien oh, yeah Damien oh, loved the editing yeah. did you yeah. like his direction yeah, I mean, my, again, I liked the movie actually, but despite my misgivings about it, I, you know, I, I, I didn't, you know, I, I didn't get nervous or antsy or edgy or I wasn't uncomfortable with it. Maybe it's because I, I, did you I have know really that good life. teachers? Hell no. Oh. <laughs> I'm much older than you. I had horror. <laughs> I, 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 that that kind of experience was not unusual for me, so it wasn't making me antsy at all. Yeah. It's weird that Chazelle yeah. was a jazz drummer in high school who sure. based this off his own abusive relationship with a teacher. And also that his other feature, uh, Grand Piano, was also kind yeah. of an action mm -hmm. movie with musical elements. Yeah, and, and he said <laughs> as, as bad as that teacher was, nowhere near to what he had Fletcher mm -hmm. doing oh, and, sure. and mm -hmm. such. So, Oh, the other great thing we didn't really talk about <clears throat> regarding Miles Teller is that he's been playing drums for 15 years. Mm -hmm. uh, or since no, he was 15, since he was 15 years 15. old. Yeah. Thank mm -hmm. you. And 
a lot of what we see on screen is mm-hmm. actually him um, drumming. Yeah. And there there are a few shots mm-hmm. that some overheads and close-ups of the hands, mm-hmm. but even Miles Teller and, and Damien say, you know, you can cheat drumming. You can, yeah. you know. Because honestly, I, I, I don't know anything about the drums. If I would, okay, he's he's drumming. It worked for drumming. me, even though I don't know how it accurate seamless it was to me, or not. And I think that's, that's incredibly impressive. Yeah, yeah. and like, it, it was funny because we talked about that on uh, Should I Stay with Chloe Moritz mm-hmm. and the way that it was edited but they actually digitized <laughs> yeah they, they actually they cut from her face to her hands that well no they, did they digitized that, they, her head onto her body oh did they really oh, oh nice yeah nice yeah. you could tell are you kidding <laughs> yeah they digitized that's but, interesting but, but with miles tell yeah. her again whatever experience and and again damien says look he's not the best drummer on the right. planet he goes but you know you could work with him mm-hmm. and i just found it very fascinating that especially caravan at the end mm-hmm. You know, that was all they had that mm-hmm. session drummers do that solo. Mm-hmm. And he said, yeah, he was able to fake it in the shots yeah. and angles that I used. And every now and yeah. then you'd go to every now and then it was obvious when they weren't mm-hmm. showing his face, whether it was an overhead shot, if mm-hmm. you do a close up of the hands. Sure. But yeah. for the most part, he had well, they edited it nicely. I mean, it's, yeah, yeah. It's nice he's got an amazing thing. facility for filming music. Sure. I would love to see what he would do with a film that's not about music. I'd like because to see him it does, do an action movie. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it does seem like this is so close to his autobiographical experience. I'd like to see him branch outside of that a little bit before we can judge him as a director fully. Yeah. But he did a good job. He did do movie. a really good job with this. I thought. Mm-hmm. You know, um, script writing, we, we, we know that you, no, that there are issues, but the movie looked good. No, and it looked great. Oh, I thought it was wonderful. wonderful. Did you know that, that most of it was shot in Los Angeles? I right? know. I had no idea. Yeah. Most yeah. of it was shot in Los Angeles. Interesting. It was, uh, they got a better tax break. Oh, really? And plus <laughs> everybody was here. Everyone, Finally. People involved and in the production. So that's how they could make it. Yeah. Based. So they, so it was LA for New York shooting, but they did go to New York to film some exteriors. Mm-hmm. I thought the whole movie was filmed in. New York. No uh, so they did a good job. Yeah, they did. Nice, Great. nice good little magic. Design. Way to go, <laughs> right Way to go art director. Yeah, Movie magic. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. So, so. Mm-hmm. awesome. I feel like we can go to our overall impressions. Yeah. Please do. And since you opened uh, it up, <laughs> <laughs> all right. My overall impressions of this movie. I I think it was really well made. I loved the focus on the jazz. Um, I thought that everything was very strong, and it was just an interesting chunk of life that I was very happy to watch but not be a part of <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's how i feel and i feel that yeah th- this right now like, as i said at the top in my top three mm-hmm. um i really like its kineticism its energy that it had i really liked um the performances were fantastic uh i do urge people um Get the soundtrack. I mean, I've been, you know, I've even had if you're not a fan, movie. believe me, because I, I don't know jazz at all, but I think you'll enjoy that just for the music alone. I think I, you'll enjoy it. When I watched this earlier in the week, it was a crowded, it was a crowded mm-hmm. theater. Um, there was a couple sitting, um, sitting right behind us, and when the movie was older, mm-hmm. over, um, the female part of the couple, she was like, first thing I'm doing is going on getting iTunes right now, and I'm getting yeah. the soundtrack, yeah. and. And listen, I think I, I'm hoping that maybe it opens up like you. You said, mm-hmm. wow, this is amazing. I'm not even into jazz. Yeah. And I really like this. Yeah. So. so, Did uh, the theater, the showing you were at, did the crowd applaud after the final cut to black? Nope. Mm-hmm. They didn't mind. I did. <laughs> I, there, there were very few people clapping. Like I was the only, yeah. like when he said, fuck you, I was right. like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, and nobody else was. No. And then it cut to black. I actually had was, a few people was, leaving before Fade to oh, Black. Oh, so. wow. Really? Uh, yeah. Wow. Uh, this is, yeah. I just want to say in my theater, I saw a sold out screening Arclight and the mm-hmm. applause erupted as soon as the credits. Okay. Same, Thank same you. here. It was like Josh insane Engineer applause. Josh and Josh Richmond had yeah. the same experience. Did you go to well, the same jo- theater? Uh, it was actually both at Arclight <laughs> also. actually yeah. the same person. I, we we just are. can't There's one tell. Josh. I will, I'm, I'm engineering at the same time. I'll chalk that up to it being an Arclight crowd. Might be. Might have responded to it differently, but yeah. I, I thought it was. I thought this was a, such a crowd pleasing movie, just the way it was structured, and that was a perfect. Mm-hmm. Like, we don't need to show the applause after the performance. We will just cut and we'll let the audience applaud in our place. Although maybe it didn't work it's, at your screenings. Yeah, we, we must have had a different movie because my. <laughs> I actually heard people as we were leaving going, "Well, that happened." So they did. Wow. So the idea Harsh. that it was a, it just wasn't the same movie. Yeah, I, didn't, I mean, I didn't. I didn't get that, and I saw this at the landmark. Mm-hmm. I have no. Yeah, I saw it at the landmark. Mm-hmm. Saw it during the week, and it was. Uh, it was. I wouldn't say it was sold out, but it was pretty full. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I, don't I didn't get that reaction. I know. I, well, I, I thought, okay, wow, what did he see? Because I didn't think that. Uh, but, right. but, you know, you never know. I mean, interesting. I, I so and this is one of the best movies I've seen so far this year. It's battling out with Boyhood currently for a top spot. Um, I, yeah, it's just, it is so kinetic and it's so precise. And both of the central performances and the way they're playing off of each other. Uh, I was, yeah, I was thrilled and I was totally hooked from start to finish. Mm-hmm. Highly recommend it. I enjoyed the movie. I lo- I think the music is great in it. Go for it just for that. Um, uh, I have my misgivings about the st- story and structure. Very thin plot. Not a lot of character development for me. And I tend to like those more. So, so. and we also uh, throw out a big thanks to Ben Wilkins. Absolutely. Craig, man, thank you so much for thank coming you. on in the yeah. show. Oh, Ben, in answer to your question, he texted me. I thought yeah. this was funny. He's <laughs> like, was that Maria Menounos talking? Uh. <laughs> no. We have Sarah Stratton. No. Um, is is as beautiful and wonderful oh, thank and you. very nice. Uh, so, and we love Maria for producing this. Absolutely. So she's with you. She's with us in spirit, Ben. Thank you very much for coming on the I show with us. Quickly, let them know where they can find you. Who are you pointing to? You. Me? You. Yes, young lady. Oh, you can find me here at Anatomy of a Movie there you go. or on Box Office Breakdown with Schmoes No Podcast. And um, sometimes I'm on After Buzz TV, too. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Uh, here at Anatomy of a Movie and at DMovies1701 on Twitter. Talk. Guys, follow me at Radio TFB on Twitter. You can also check out my Coen Brothers themed movie podcast at AcceptTheMystery.net. You can check out other stuff I do at JoshRichman.net. And I'm engineering a whole bunch of shows at After Buzz TV. He has a lot of places That's you can right. find I him. I sure do. You can't find me anywhere but here. <laughs> so tune in ah. next time when we can bring you another Anatomy of a Movie. We'll talk to you next time. Thanks, all. From producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the rest of the Anatomy of a Movie staff, we would like to thank you for listening and subscribing to the show. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to email or tweet us. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been Anatomy of a Movie.